So let's make some sourdough bread. This video has been pretty highly requested, so I thought like, why not? I'm not like a sourdough expert like some of these bakers are, but I'm just gonna show you like kind of a beginner sourdough recipe. It's so simple, but it's more about the technique because sourdough bread is really simple ingredients, but it's more about the technique and how you do it. It's not something you could just like go on autopilot until you have like the whole thing down. So you really wanna be mindful when you're making the bread. You wanna pay attention to all of the ingredients and how much and all the measurements because when baking, it's kind of like a science it is a science so you want to make sure everything is pretty precise and you follow the directions really well i'm going to leave like the recipe down below we're going to need more than a few things first off you're going to need a scale a baker's scale the reason why is because you want to make sure everything is really precise and measured correctly you're going to need some salt some kosher salt i actually use pink sea salt because that's just what i like to use it it's a really good salt. You want to make sure you're not using just like table salt. You have to make sure it's like the big crystals of salt. That's really important. You want good quality salt. You need a spoon. So you're going to need a lom, which is basically just blade in French. So you want one of these bad boys because this helps you cut the bread and let the air out so your bread doesn't like explode in weird places. So a lom is really important and it also makes it so you can make like an artisan bread. I, this isn't absolutely necessary, but I love a strainer, like a little sifter, not really a strainer, but a sifter, a baker sifter. I'm gonna leave also all the products down below if you wanna purchase them, they're not affiliates or anything like that, but if you want like to get started on a, your own little baking sourdough kit, I'm gonna leave the stuff down below that I bought. Most of it is all from Amazon, so it's pretty simple. You can even buy sourdough kits now, so that's something that I would recommend. I have a basket, this is a sourdough basket. It has a linen cover, and this is where the bread is gonna sit and shape, so this is very important as well. So I would recommend getting two of these. I only have one of these, but I would recommend getting two because I have to use like have to use a wooden bowl because I only have one of these. So I would get the pack that has two because you can get the kit that has two of those uh, baskets. You're gonna need whole wheat flour. You want to make sure that you have good whole wheat flour. This one is the Bob's Red Mill whole wheat flour. I like this one the best. And then some unbleached bread flour so you're gonna need that as well I also get brown rice flour and you mix it I'll show you guys a little bit later when we get to that step but you're gonna mix the brown rice flour with the whole wheat flour for the dusting that you're gonna use with the sifter to make sure that your bread doesn't stick to anything and that's really important too and then of course you're gonna need a good sized bowl a glass or wooden bowl will do either or I have a wooden bowl so that's what I use I always bake and make my bread in this bowl that bowl and I are like good friends I'm always using her and then you just need some water some room temperature water this is just crystal geyser water but you want to make sure it's not from the tap that it's room temperature and it's filtered clean water and then the biggest the biggest ingredient of all you need sourdough starter now I keep mine in this Cuisinart little container and it has like a wood top but you can keep it in a glass bowl and just cover it and put it in the fridge or um, a mason jar works really well too and then I just have a spoon in it because I was mixing it around you don't want to put any metals in the starter only wood because it reacts weird with the starter if you guys don't know what starter is that is the main ingredient that you're really going to need to make the sourdough bread it's what makes it ferment and makes it rise it's the natural yeast in the bread so you're gonna definitely need starter you can get it off of a friend I got it off of my aunt and there's tons of videos here on YouTube to look up I make sourdough bread starter it takes about a week or so to make the starter you have to keep feeding it flour and water um, with certain amounts every single day until you get this nice fermented sourdough starter so that's how you start a sourdough starter um, but I would look into those videos to see like the measurements and how you do it and all of that stuff so it explains all of that in other videos but this video is just once you have your sourdough bread starter i'll leave some of my favorite sourdough starter videos down below in the description if you want to check those out and yeah so once you have all of your ingredients you have your sourdough bread starter all of your flours your salt everything 
then we're gonna go ahead and mix it all up and I'm gonna take you through some of the technique that I've learned so far. I've been making sourdough for more than a few months now and I make it on a weekly basis. It's so calming to me and I absolutely love it. So that's a long intro, but let's go ahead and let's get into making some bread. I'm so excited. All right, so to start off, you wanna clear your workspace. Obviously, we don't want a cluttered mess. Okay, so we want to have our scale. Our scale is so important, so I'm going to take that out. You want to make sure that you feed your sourdough bread starter the night before. So you want to make sure you take it out the fridge and you feed it so it's nice and active and nice and bubbly. The bubbles mean you have a healthy starter and it's active and it's ready to go and it's ready to ferment and stuff. So that's really important. You want to make sure it's nice and active. I'm gonna move this top because it looks gross. You have to feed your starter every week if it's in the fridge, you have to pull it out, feed it with flour and water, and then put it back in the fridge after it does its whole rising and it you know eats and all of that. And then after that, you um, let it sit overnight and then you're gonna feed it again. So that's what we're gonna do now. I fed it last night. I took it out the fridge, I fed it last night, let it sit on the counter. Now if you're going to leave your sourdough bread on the counter and you're going to be like a really, really avid baker, then I would say you have to feed it like every day. So that's why we kind of put it in the fridge so it rests and it stops the fermentation because otherwise you're going to have to feed it every single day. And I think that could be a little tedious unless you're baking bread every day. So I'm gonna take this little mason jar that I have and I'm gonna put it on the scale because you want to make sure you know the weight of the jar or whatever you're using because we're about to feed our sourdough bread starter and let it sit and then we're gonna do the auto lease step which is the next step to actually start the dough so this weighs 213 and we want to do 25 grams because when you get a scale it's gonna be in grams you want to do 25 grams of sourdough bread starter so 213 plus 25 so 213 plus 25 is 238 So now we are going to just, ooh, ooh, ooh. It's a little much. We don't want to overdo it, but I'm just going to use about 25 grams of starter. It's okay if it's a little bit over, but you just want to pour that into your little mason jar. And now we're going to feed it with room temperature water and flour. And it takes about maybe an hour to two hours, depending how hot or cold it is in your house. So you want to make sure your house is about 75 to 80 degrees when you're trying to have your sourdough starter rise and do its thing. I do not really measure this that much. I just literally kind of eyeball it. But you know, there you can do that. I know I said precise measurements, but not when it really comes to the sourdough bread starter feeding process. I kind of just eyeball it. I just do a few little of these little spoonfuls. It's gonna take a little bit of water. Again, room temperature water. You don't want it to be cold or else it's not going to rise. You want to use a wooden spoon when it comes to mixing it together. It should be about the consistency of pancake batter, but maybe a little bit thicker. So once we mix that up, we are going to put just a top. It doesn't have to fit perfectly, but just put a top on it and then you want to move it to a spot in your house where it's a little bit warmer like i said 75 to 80 degrees is really ideal for making sourdough bread if it's colder than that your dough might have a hard time rising or your leavening which is your starter might have a hard time rising as well too so you want to make sure maybe turn on the heat if it's winter time or something put it near the furnace 75 to 80 degrees is like perfect so we're gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and I will show you guys how to do the float test and figure out if your sourdough starter is ready to add to your bread because you wanna make sure that it's nice and risen and fluffy and bubbly and active. You wanna make sure it's really active before you add it to your sourdough bread dough otherwise it's not going to do anything and rise so that's very important so you want to do a few tests before you just throw it in there you want to make sure that it's nice and active and ready okay sorry my kids are in the background they live here you're definitely going to hear them um yeah <laughs> all right so now we are going to take our scale again i told you the scale is so important and another like jar 
we're gonna put that on the scale and again this one weighs 305 we want to keep that in mind for our measurements because you always want to subtract the number and the weight of the jar um, set aside from the actual ingredients you're putting in so you don't want to make that part of the total of the ingredients you're putting in does that make sense okay 700 grams of all-purpose bread flour so that's literally two jars of these I've done this so many times like I don't even really need a measure anymore I literally just know that I just need basically two of these but if you're doing this and you're new you need 700 grams of all-purpose flour So in total, we want to do a thousand grams of flour between the all-purpose bread flour and the whole wheat flour. So it's 700 grams of bread flour and 300 grams of the um, wheat flour. And then now we're moving on to the wheat flour. So there's only 300 grams of this which for me equals just one jar. Now the reason why we do the whole wheat flour is it just really gives it some more flavor and also adds in, it adds some healthy grains to the bread. So that is important when you're making sourdough bread. I guess you could just make all white sourdough bread, but when you add the wheat, it really gives it a distinct, like a different flavor. So I really recommend doing the wheat flour. So once we've incorporated all of that, now you wanna mix these together really well and just make sure they're well incorporated. I like to use my wooden spoon for this. You can use whatever spoon you want for this part. It really doesn't matter. And when you're making sourdough bread, you will get messy. It is kind of a messy process, if you will, like it's, a little messy you might see the kids get involved in it a little bit later because they love making sourdough bread with me so we'll see if they want to help but they probably will so i hope you guys don't mind but yeah so you just want to well incorporate the flowers and make sure it's all mixed together really nicely you want to do this while it's still dry before we add the water and the next step will be adding the water i like to turn the bowl when i do this like in a circle because it just helps really incorporate the flowers just easy and you don't have to do so much work by when you're just you know trying to mix it so spin the bowl while you mix it together so we have our thousand grams of flour in here all-purpose bread flour and our wheat flour now we're gonna add 700 grams of water so for me that's about a jar and a quarter of this I like to dig a little well when I'm doing the water just makes it mix a little bit better. I've kind of mixed things all together and now I'm gonna use my hands. I did most of it with my wooden spoon, but you really wanna get in there and make sure that the flour is really incorporated and you don't want any huge like flour pockets in your dough. And this is the stage where it's called auto lease. So this is really just getting the dough prepped for the starter. And this is just flour and water, you guys. So this is what this stage is. And you wanna let this sit after we're done mixing it for about an hour and cover it. You wanna make sure you cover it and let it sit for about an hour. I actually like to use baby swaddles to cover it, but kitchen towels work really well or really whatever kind of fabric you have. Or if you have one of those like plastic bread covers, that works or plastic dough covers that works really well too at this stage it's not doing too much it's just kind of coming together forming gluten which is important we do need gluten obviously to make bread but there's no like rising or any of that happening right now until we actually put the starter in so we are just forming gluten in our dough right now which again like i said is important so the dough being elastic like this or it's starting to be elastic this is gluten this is forming gluten so we're going to cover this up and let it sit for an hour while our sourdough starter is rising and becoming active and then we will incorporate the salt and the starter and mix it all together and then we are going to be coming back and turning the dough on itself to create air and definition and air pockets and all of that good stuff when it comes to making sourdough. So stay tuned. 
All right, so we're gonna cover that up. And then I like to put it over here in the warmest spot of my kitchen, which would be the oven area alongside the starter. And we'll be back in a little bit. Have a quick cupcake break. We made red velvet cupcakes last night for like no reason. So good. And now we're going to do our salt. I'm using pink kosher sea salt. So good. This is the Himalayan salt. And we are back to using our scale. Very important. I'm using a little wooden bowl. And I'm going to put it on the scale and zero it out first. And then we're going to measure the bowl first that you're putting it in. So you know how much it is. Like for instance, this is 58 grams. We're going to add 20 grams of salt to this. To add to our bread now i have my 20 grams of salt so i'm going to put this to the side we're going to move our scale because we don't need our scale at this moment and now i just have some water and we're going to do the float test starter is actually active and ready to ferment our bread now this step you guys is very important because if your starter isn't active your bread's going to do nothing it's going to be flat it's not going to rise so this is very important. I just have a bowl of water and I'm gonna pour this into here. And if it floats, then it's ready. It's active to put in your dough. And if it's not, if it sinks, then it's not ready. So I would give it another like 30 minutes, but you wanna keep on checking it every 30 minutes or so um, while you're waiting it for it to be active enough. So you just want to pour a little bit like I think I poured just a little much but that's totally fine like you see how it floats and it's not sinking eventually it will sink like it's sinking after a while now but if we do it again just like one little drop it's floating so that's what you want you want it to float this is like the easiest test to see if it's buoyant enough to ferment your bread so now that our starter is ready we're gonna just like pour this out we don't need this the float test is the easiest test to find out again if your bread will be properly fermented or not so you want to make sure you do either the window pane test which is a little different you stretch the dough or you stretch the starter to see if you can see like light through the starter without it breaking. I don't really do that one, it's just more complicated. It's so much easier just to see if it sink or floats. And Noah really enjoys that too for sensory. Anyways, you wanna make sure you have clean hands because this is where it also gets messy. So I'm gonna pour, so I'm gonna get as much of the starter out as possible. It's okay if you don't get it all. Now sourdough takes, I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning, but sourdough takes a really long time to make like I said, it's not super complicated. It's just more about taking the time. It's literally made with love, you guys. So it takes a while to build up the air bubbles and let it ferment. And the reason why sourdough is more healthy for you, it's because it has all that time to ferment and sit and break down the grains and the gluten in the bread. It has that, because it has natural fermentation, it breaks down that coating on the grain, on top of the grain, which makes it easier for your body to digest. And yeah, so I'm just gonna flip it on itself just like this. And then we're gonna add our salt. You don't wanna forget to add our salt. This is where, this is the step where you would add the salt. I like to do a little bit and then kind of fold it on itself and then add the rest. So it's not just all in one place. You wanna make sure you incorporate this really well. And you don't wanna to be too rough with it either. During this whole process, you wanna make sure that you're pretty gentle with the dough and just really folding it on itself and not popping any air bubbles that we have already created because that's the whole point of it sitting and us turning it on itself is just to create those beautiful little air pockets and that's what we want like when you cut sourdough you see all those beautiful pockets of air and that's what we are trying to create here so i'm going to add the rest of the salt I think pink salt is just so pretty. I don't know why, but it has like this pretty glisten to it. 
and I th feel like it just gives it an elevated taste when you use the pink salt but you can use whatever kind of kosher salt you want but again don't use any kind of like table salt you want to make sure it's kosher meaning like the best quality salt you can find and it usually comes in like crystals if it's kosher I think you could probably get it in the small granules but I always get it in the crystals so put our blanket or our towel back on and let it sit over by the warm spot in your kitchen or by the furnace if it's winter if you live in like a cold climate and let it sit for another hour we're gonna come back and turn this every single hour three times so three times every single hour and then once we're done with that once we're done with the fermentation stage then we'll move on to shaping and proofing and then finally baking. So again, it's a process, it's made with love, but I swear it's so worth it. And once you have the technique and the process down, it really doesn't take much thought or much effort. And to me, it's super therapeutic and I just love to bake bread. Like last week we were sick. And so I haven't baked bread in like two weeks, which isn't like me. I usually bake bread once or twice a week. And not to mention that this recipe will make two loaves of bread. Like you want to make sure you're getting your time and efforts worth because making sourdough bread does take a lot of work as you can see. You just want to make sure, you know, you're getting at least two loaves out of this, right? So this recipe will make you two loaves of sourdough bread. Let me help you. We have to wash our hands. If you want to help mommy, you have to wash your hands, okay? So come over here. Okay, so when you're folding the dough, Noah was just in here helping me, you want to make sure that you are just gently folding on itself, just like that, just picking it up, dropping it down. And you want to just go all around, yeah baby, you want to go all around the bowl and just do that. And then you want to cover it back up again for another hour. And you get, and you want to do this three times of folding. By doing this, you are building aeration in the dough you are letting it ferment which helps break down that gluten coating that i was talking about so it just makes it so much easier to digest but you don't want to overwork the dough so you just want to do this like a few times and then let it sit again for another hour okay. thank you noah for putting baby wipes up there <laughs> been turning it every hour for like basically all day this process has taken me all day it's like nine o'clock and we started this at like 12 so here we are <laughs> and now we are going to shape the dough and then we're gonna let it proof and rise and then we're gonna put it in the fridge but first before we do that we need to flour on the surface so nothing sticks because the dough sourdough bread is really sticky the dough is so sourdough is really sticky and in this little container that I have here it has like a little top I just mix some brown rice flour which is this the brown rice flour and my wheat flour and I just mix them together and I keep it in this jar already mixed so I don't really have to worry about it and then I put it in my little strainer or sifter 
and I just flour the surface. This is really important because it will be a mess if you do not flour the surface before you put your dough down. So definitely do that. When you're done with it on the surface, you can always scrape it back into the bowl that you're using because you don't want to waste any flour. So now that our surface is floured, we are going to gently release the dough from its bowl onto the surface. Just nice one little glob of dough. Now this is optional, but I really, really suggest to have one of these cutters. This came with my sourdough bread kit. And then I'm going to also flour the surface on top of the dough too. This just really helps when you are shaping it so it doesn't stick to itself. The whole point of shaping the dough is just so you get a really nice looking loaf. So don't worry about this too much if you are new to making sourdough bread, which you probably are if you're watching my video. So we just cut it straight down the middle. Okay, so we want to gently fold it in on each side. And then I want to fold it kind of like a burrito and then roll it this and then you also want to flour your basket as well so we floured our basket and now we are going to fold it like this on each side just really quickly you can pinch the edges together and then you just want to roll it like this and then seam side up you want to put it in the basket now this is going to be the bottom of the dough on the top and then i always like to heavily flour the top as well you want to make sure you really really put a lot of flour on your basket and on your towel because you want to make sure it just doesn't stick and it doesn't mess up the shape of your loaf now i have one more side that i'm going to do the same thing and put it in another bowl and then we are going to cover this and let this sit for about an hour hour and a half and let it proof which basically just means rising as well so i'm going to put this to the side and do the same for this next piece of dough so we can have two loaves. part of this sourdough bread video you can leave your dough in the fridge for up to 72 hours which is three days and the longer you leave it in the more flavor the more fermentation taste it's gonna have which is you know the more soury taste just depending how sour you like your sourdough bread I usually don't like it too sour but just like a little hint of sour is fine with me but the longer you do leave it in the longer it is gonna taste more fermented but a lot of people like that about sourdough but before we take our dough out of the fridge, you want to preheat your oven to 450. And then we're going to put our Dutch oven. We're going to put our Dutch oven in. Don't mind mine. Mine has been well loved. We've been baking and cooking so much in this. So maybe don't get a white one if you're looking for one. But I, I still like my white one. It's stained, but you can get the stains out if you really wanted to. I got mine off of Amazon and it's been really nice. I am going to take the top off though and just place the bottom part in the oven let it preheat to 450 before we put our dough in it and i don't think you really need a cast iron but i don't know you need some kind of pot to bake your bread in so i would really highly highly recommend a cast iron dutch oven because it just makes it so easy you just place it in there and you let it bake but first we want to preheat so let's do that Now the reason why I don't put the top on, it's just so much easier this way when you're trying to bake the bread. There's no need to really put the top on. You want to put the top on after you are putting the dough inside the Dutch oven. So I already preheated my oven so this shouldn't take too long. And then we are going to cut our bread so the air is released and we don't have like weird cracks going through it. You always want to make sure you do that. 
and yeah so, so you're gonna need some parchment paper and I like to fold mine kind of like a diamond and it just makes it so much easier to pull out when you're done baking so I am going to put the bread on here and you so you want to gently flip the dough over onto the parchment paper just really quickly just like that and then we are going to cut it or score it now I just like to do something simple along just like that just something so simple and that's what I recommend for beginners you don't want to go too overboard you could do like a cross if you want to but I wouldn't go super crazy with it there's so many pretty like designs you could do though but for your first time I would just recommend doing something so simple just like a little slash or maybe if you are feeling it to do a little more like I just did a little cross nothing crazy now we are going to pop it into the Dutch oven just like that make sure it's in there really good don't burn yourself though because remember we preheated this so this is gonna be really nice and hot and yeah so that's really it so I placed that in there and then I'm going to put the top on and bring it to the oven now you want to bake this with the top on for 20 minutes and then you want to take the top off after 20 minutes and then bake it for 30 minutes and that's gonna give you like the perfect bread and it's not gonna be too hard it's not gonna be your bread won't be too hard or too crunchy you want it to have a crunch but not too much of a crunch so yeah now it's just a waiting game and i'm gonna wait 20 minutes then come back take it off and then another 30 minutes so now i took the lid off of the dutch oven and now we're just gonna let it bake for another 30 minutes if you want it a little bit crispier you can bake it a little bit longer but just keep an eye on it and yeah so we're gonna just keep letting that go it's finally done i'm gonna pull it out before it gets too too baked you don't want it to be too much it's like literally perfect it has like a really good really good crust i love that it has like the beautiful little bubbles on it and honestly just a perfect little bread loaf they're like little snowflakes though like every single bread that you bake it's gonna be a little bit different now I like to cover this up I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this but I personally love to cover it up with like a towel and it just keeps all the moisture maybe moisture is not the correct word it just makes the bread really nice and soft and gives it like this great texture so I like to cover it with a towel while it cools off while it cools down and this way you have a nice soft 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 bread so i'm going to do that i'm going to cover it while it cools off you do not want to cut the bread while it's hot you should definitely let it cool down this way it's still nice and soft because if you cut it too soon it'll be hard to put a little salt a little butter and honey on mine there's so many different ways you can eat it anyways you guys this bread is so good it has a really really good flavor I wish you guys could taste it through the screen right now it has a great sour but not too sour sourdough flavor it just tastes perfect I left it in there for like two days you guys so over the weekend and this is perfect there's a lot of times where I have baked it like the next day and it's still really good but I think it's even better when you leave it in the fridge to ferment for a few days it's so good I like to do avocado toast make sandwiches you name it even French toast is really good anything with bread is good right so let me know if you guys recreate this down below if you like the recipe or not tag me on Instagram if you do it and yeah you guys this is so good it's definitely a labor of love every bread is a snowflake they all come out different but 
so good you guys this is so so good and it's been like a week and a half since i made sourdough up until now and i have missed it so so good snowflakes did you say snowflakes did i say snowflakes yeah because it's good mm -hmm. did you eat your bread no not yet not yet i'm eating it with cheese oh you're eating it with cheese okay yeah and my, and my mom my dog. You did a really good job. High five. I'm making the bread. High five. High yeah. five. Yeah, good job. But um, yeah, it's a really good way to get your kids involved. And my kids love sourdough bread. Noah calls it my Noah calls it my sour bread. So sour bread. Sour bread. You got it. Yeah, You're but so it's cute. Something upside down. There's something about making your own bread, knowing there's no preservatives or any chemicals or pear like all that good stuff you know there's none of that in here the ingredients are so simple so good so clean and yeah you guys i love making sourdough bread now this these loaves will last you about a week maybe a little over a week but really you don't want to go over that it will start to mold and go bad because there is no preservatives or chemicals or anything in this bread so it will go bad a lot faster than store-bought bread i have bought bread from the store you guys and believe it and believe it or not it's like totally fine no mold nothing after two months like you know there's something wrong with that there's no reason that bread should be lasting two months in a bag I like to store it in reusable plastic bags and just zip it up or I like to keep it in or I like to keep it in the Dutch oven with the lid closed. It goes a little bit bad faster that way, but if you put it in like a reusable Ziploc bag or just a Ziploc bag, it lasts longer. My kids are being dinosaurs right now. Anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. I really hope you enjoyed this video, learned something. Maybe you'll try it out. Again, I know it's a lot of work, but it's so worth it. It tastes so much better than store bought bread so make sure you like subscribe all that good stuff and i will see you guys in the next one bye